So here's a question. Is boxing an art or a science? Hey there, boxing fans. I'm Tiffany, and this is True Fan Boxing. Although boxing is known as the sweet science, aficionados like our own Jay Monty believe that boxing is definitely an art form. Me? I'm not so sure, but I do know this. Boxing has inspired tons of artists throughout the years. This week, we head back to Brooklyn, where one artist recreated the sights and sounds of Gleason's gym in, of all things, a children's book. When you walk in the door here, you're walking into history, and it, you, you feel it. A uh, picture book for children, uh, like Gleason's, is a marriage of words and pictures. This is when the, when the sugar boy, the little car main character story, first walks into the gym, this is what he sees. Big windows, all the activity in the ring, all, all kinds of little things happening. The kids doing focus pads, getting their hands wrapped, girls, men, old pros, everybody in the ring. I walked in the door, and, and it's not only the look, the smell, and the so especially the sound of this place, but the fact that there were so many kids. There were kids uh, with the best trainers in the world training them, little girls, little boys, women, blue-collar guys, professional fighters, everything. And it just, it, it, with the sense of community in here is what really got me about it. This is the point of all the noise in the gym ceases, pretty much as it is right now. It's very quiet. And, and the only thing you hear, only thing you see is the light coming in the window and you maybe hear the, the little clank of a barbell. Somebody sitting there resting. And then all of a sudden the noise will start up again. But this is a quiet moment in the gym. I make a, a kind of a visceral image where you see people hitting bags and you see the, the, the incredible color and the dense uh, dramatic lighting and things in here and with the light coming in the window or these artificial lights. And then you hear all those sounds in the background. You hear the sounds of the, just like that squeaking sound you hear the, and you hear from the heavy bag and you hear the pe people's uh, uh, souls squeaking on the canvas and the punching in, into the uh, focus pads. All of that, if I can put that into the words, in fact, all the way through the book, I've used sound words like bam, bam, thump, thump, all through the book so that you're always, as you're reading the text, conscious of the sound that's going on in the background. You can see all the heavy bags and all the action and the ring action too, which appealed to me very much. And all the sound words here, making the sounds of this. It took uh, a good year and a half in the making. I spent a year and a half coming down here three or four times a week, all different times of the day, uh, of days of the week, just to see what stories would evolve. As, a, as an illustrator, I can add and subtract whatever I want. So I put a lot more guys. But at times, there are several guys here working at the same time. But what appealed to me about it was that the mirrors are distort, as you can see, distort the image. They look like funhouse mirrors, which is what I've called them in the book. This particular shot here that appears on the back cover, the open lockers always really, really appealed to me. They look like they look like uh, a sculptor by the name of Louise Nevelson who made constructions out of odd things. And it looks to me they look they look like they're planned, but this very random throwing of things in those lockers makes a very beautiful composition. The people at Gleason's love it. I mean they Bruce tells me he has it for sale here in Pete and he people they stand that's me you know people say that's me that's me everybody can find themselves in there you know okay, I was standing at the other end of the gym and I saw little dynamite here get up on a chair so he could reach the uh, the speed bag and I ran over here to capture that and what's so wild about this particular wall is the fact that the paint is peeling it's like the, the wall itself tells the story of this place just look at that isn't that wonderful almost smell the gym too. Not so sure if that's a good thing. So let's move on to something that smells a little bit sweeter. It's Twitter time. It appears that WBC welterweight champ Andre Berto would like to give Sugar Shane Mosley a chance to win back the belt. He writes, I need all my followers to hit up at Shane Mosley and tell him to talk all that smack to me. Sign that contract and I'll give you what you want. Back in the day, fighters used to call each other out in gyms or bar rooms or even back alleys. Nowadays, they're calling each other out on Twitter? Seems a little girly to me. But hey, maybe that's how these two met. Here's a video I found on Intersect TV's boxing channel. Okay, ready, go. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. Gosh, really? change it. <laughs> 
You strategy. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! Someone's gonna break a nose. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not so sure what that was, but I do know that women's boxing has come a long way. As a matter of fact, the World Boxing Hall of Fame just inducted its first female member. And of course, True Fan Boxing's Jay Monty was there. Hi, I'm Jay Monty with True Fan Boxing. We're here with Lucia Riker. Lucia, how is it like to be in the Hall of Fame? Well, I'm, I feel honored and I feel touched. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a crown on many years of hard work. It's uh, the door open for many women to come and take boxing to another level. It's, uh, it's an act of respect on hard work, no matter what gender you have. Uh, 25 years of suffering, sacrifices, perseverance, and belief. There'll be a lot more with Lucille Riker next week on True Fan Boxing. I'm Tiffany, and I'll see you then.